In this Northern Brewer video, we're looking at some seriously cool equipment that will help you make better beer. The Grainfather conical fermenters and glycol chilling systems are next level pieces of equipment that bring you closer to the world of a professional brewer, improving control of fermentation temperatures, yeast handling, and easy transferring of beer to packaging. Hello everybody, welcome to Northern Brewer HQ. I am Chip, this is William. We are here actually with kind of a rig rundown, you could almost say, of William's basement sure. home brewery because it is outfitted so intensely with Grainfather <laughs> with Grainfather products. And we here at Northern Brewer get a lot of questions about Grainfather products, uh, how they're used, how to put them together. So we kind of thought we would do a full from brew to kegging, including fermentation, cold crashing, yeast dumping, yep. using these products to help you learn how to use them more efficiently. We're gonna do this using two Grainfather conical fermenters, including the standard and pro controllers, and the new two-port GC2 Grainfather glycol chiller with all the related accessories. You'll see setup, installation, usage, and William here's got some tips from his experience using these products to make it even easier for you. As this is a rather in-depth look at all of this different equipment, the video is going to be fairly long. So we should say if you're looking for something specific, a topic or piece of equipment, see the clickable timestamps in the video description. That'll help you get to exactly what you're looking for. As always, if you enjoy watching us nerd out about homebrewing equipment, talking about ways to improve your beer quality, like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and share the video far and wide. Before we brew the beer and put it through the full process, first things first, we have to set up these pieces of equipment, starting with the glycol chiller, right? And you may not want to wait till brew day to do this either. You might want to get it done at yeah. least the day before. Yeah, the glycol chiller was actually done a day before or two days before, um, like you said, just because there's got so much other stuff going on, don't complicate your brew day with setting up new equipment. Um, so like with any new equipment, you're gonna want to unpack it, inspect it, uh, if it's going to need to be cleaned and sanitized, go ahead and do that now as well, especially the cleaning part before you get using new equipment. First thing is uh, with the glycol chiller, the nice thing is they're on wheels, so you can move it around, position it for this priming uh, the pump because you do, do need access to water, which you wouldn't need later on. Um, so like I said, the first thing you want to do is prime that pump. Uh, we're just going to go over the basic instructions. You get detailed instructions with it, but essentially what you're doing is putting in a small amount of water, recirculating that through the pump to prime that pump inside of it then you're going to add the glycol to the mix and recirc again and basically you'll recircuit a few times to get all the air bubbles out of that line so that you're just pushing the glycol mixture through the system once the pump's primed and ready to go then you can start connecting the tubes to the black back of the glycol chiller they're color coded so that makes it pretty easy the red goes to the red the blue goes to the blue um, they will connect to the conical in a specific location, but we'll talk about that a little bit later because there's a little difference to that. Uh, one of the tips I've found that it's helpful from using the, the glycol system so much is to have a keg or a spare container to put those tubes in when they're not connected to the conical fermenters. Just, so they're not just like flopped all over your yeah, floor. <laughs> yeah, tidiness, you know. <laughs> no, I like that when I walked yeah. in, I was like, What's yep. going on over here? Are you putting all the glycol in this keg? You're like, no, it's just there. Yep. So I don't trip over them. They have ends, so they seal, so that it won't leak out. So once the tubes are connected, then you can connect the, the power leads that go to the conicals themselves to the glycol chiller back. Um, they have a pretty push-in and then screw-in connection. Uh, with those, once I have those in, I will also mark the end of that so I know which port it goes to without tracing it all the way back. So um, I do one and two. Uh, Confused chip, my two is actually two dashes, <laughs> not an 11. <laughs> I do the same thing with my um, lines inside my kegerator too, just so I know what faucet they go to pretty quickly. And those match the number one and the number two that are seen on top of the yes. body of the glycol chiller. Yep. And then the last thing you'll need to do is install the uh, brass fittings. Um, so you'll get ones that go on the tubes themselves and then also screw into the conicals because conicals don't come with those connections out of the gate that comes with the connection too. So now it's time to set up the conical fermenter part of the system. The main body of the fermenter is stainless steel, eight gallon capacity. It has two different zones for temperature control, which is super handy. You can see the chilling zone here about midway up the fermenter. Glycol circulates around this band to cool the wort inside. 
This is especially nice because there's no chilling coils to clean. Everything is inside the fermenter wall. The heating zone is found around the cone at the bottom of the conical fermenter. The fermenter does have a dual valve that we now need to assemble and install. This is the dump valve. So when, you, when it's attached, you squeeze it. Mm. And all the yeast, the thicker stuff goes out here and out there. And then this would be <clears throat> essentially the pickup tube, so it sits up higher in the liquid. And this valve, when you open it, draws from up here. So you're dumping out the gunk down low to get the clear beer from up here. Again, this comes with detailed instructions on complete assembly as well. I align both these straight out with where the control box is. Here you see William turns the conical upside down just to make it a little more accessible, puts it on top of a table, uses a tri-clamp to connect the dual valve to the cone of the fermenter. Here's how it looks once it's fully in place. The top port is a dump valve with a kind of lever driven switch. A red quarter turn on off valve controls the liquid moving through the bottom valve. And you'll see these in action a little bit later in the video. So once everything's assembled and ready to have wort brought into it, you're gonna sanitize the inside of the conical real well. William uses a spray bottle, do the inside, do the body, do the lid, um, and then uh, use the valve to drain that little bit of sanitizer out of the body. Because we want you to see how both the standard and the pro controller work on this, we set up one fermenter with the standard, yep. one with the brand new pro controller, which we started from the ground up. So this is the, the fermenter with the standard control panel. Uh, it attaches to the fermenter pretty basic, uh, uses magnets and then what are called pogo pins to connect the power leads to it. Uh, as you can see, the controller does have some preset profiles in it, including ale, lager, and then you can do a couple manual one, or uh, custom ones as well. For our video, we're just going to be using uh, a manual setting for it to keep it simple. Really, the only downside to the standard controller is that it does not have Wi-Fi control, so it won't work with the Grandfather app. You have to manually set it. You'll have to go to the fermenter and make the adjustments. Any changes throughout fermentation. Yep. Whereas the Pro Wireless controller does, through the Grandfather app, control uh, any temperature changes, any functions um, of control through the app wirelessly. It's really slick. You can literally be out in your backyard and decide like, oh, you know what? I think I should start cold crashing this. Beep, 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 yep. beep, beep. Uh, but we do get a lot of question about how to put that new Pro Controller onto the face of the conical, so we real quick shot the installation of that. First thing, you want to remove the standard controller plate that comes by default on the fermenter. You do this by taking out the four screws on the corner. Inside the fermenter, you're going to see three white connectors. Connect them by matching the wire colors on both the inside wires with the outside wires that are on the controller. Make sure each connection firmly clicks into place. Next, just to ensure a tight, stable connection, you wanna tape each connector uh, both sides as they're connected in the middle. The controller comes with some black electric tape for this. Do it for each connection, tightly wrapping the tape around the wires. Then gently push the connected wires back inside the conical unit line up the controller with the four screw holes, insert and tighten the screws to attach the pro controller panel to the fermenter, and voila, you're ready to go. Upon being powered up, the controller will guide you through the next steps of setup, prompting you to the connection setup, where you use the Grainfather app to select and connect to your conical fermenters, as well as any wireless tracking equipment you might have, things like tilt, Play-Doh, other smart hydrometers and the like, which we weren't using in this case, but they are an option within the control panel. You're gonna follow the instructions on the app to find your conical. Looking at the Pro Controller, it's got a great bright display screen, easy to read for temperature and mode information. Uh, go in and adjust your settings, change units of measurement to either Fahrenheit or Celsius. Depending on your fermentation schedule, you can set the conical to heat and cool, heat only, or cool only, just really cool features within this new control box. One last thing is you're seeing throughout this video, Williams conical fermenters are outfitted. They're, they got a nice little jacket on, right? They got the fermenter coat 
insulated wraps. Why do you suggest this? Yeah, so I mean, obvious reason is you're gonna get a little bit better temp control because you're not gonna have that gradient. For me, in my basement, in my older home, I don't have the best climate control. And so once I got the, the glycol chiller connected to the conifers and during cold crashing or lagering, a lot of condensation happens on that outside of that. With those wraps, I don't get any at all. So uh, there's a big improvement that way from that. And when you told me that, I was like, oh, is it because it's like a sponge? You're like, no, it just never happens because that cold is staying inside the unit yeah, yep. instead of hitting the warm air on the outside. Yeah, you feel no, like those coats feel the same as the outside temperature. It's pretty amazing for just being oh. a little thin thing. Yeah, nice. All right, well, now that that's set up, it is finally time to brew. Like we said, Williams Brewery is outfitted. It looks like a grandfather uh, infomercial, <laughs> but it's not. It's just awesome equipment. Um, we decided to brew 10 gallons on his G40. Uh, the beer that we brewed um, is actually potentially going to be in a future video. We did a thialized smash beer, uh, which you will hopefully see about. Uh, and then we used the G40 counterflow chiller to cool the wort into two conical fermenters one again with the standard controller and one with the pro so we knocked out of the g40 at about 74 degrees winter time it can be a lot colder than that but we're getting warm now um, so but the nice thing is with that glycol chiller i don't worry about that knockout temperature like i used to because i know within a matter of a few minutes to an hour depending on how far you're off you can get those dialed into your pitching temperatures that you're looking for thanks to the glycol chiller yep uh, so once the wort is in the kind of fermenters, go ahead and move them in place near the glycol chiller itself. And now we've got chilled wort in the fermenters. We've got a glycol chiller primed and ready to go. It's time to start attaching all the tubing. And you kind of said that there's, it's not a trick to it, but there is a little bit of like, you have to know some stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not color coded like the back is. So uh, the red one, the red tube goes to the higher port on the conical and the blue port goes to the lower port. Uh, you can see on my conicals, that's not the same on both sides. So another nice thing to do with that conical coat is I write blue on there or red or just B or R. So I know without having to think which cord's going to that, which hose. Uh, the only other tip that we definitely want to mention is you and grandfather also mentions this like cutting that tubing yeah the tubing from the chiller to the conical it's recommended to cut it um, to just the length you need in their instructions that's going to help with less heat loss or heat pickup in the in the chilling tube um, one thing i also recommend is go a little bit further and on the end with the brass connections i like to cut it so that those brass connections are actually covered up right. by that um, insulated wrap as well because they'll get condensation on it as well. So. so an extra little bit of that insulated tubing kind of came over the end of your red and blue yep. so that when they connect in everything looks flush from yes. that jacket on the conical to the tube over the wire. Yep. So yep. it comes with these really long wires or yeah. tubes yep. and you know to Six save feet. to to also not have stuff to trip over and stuff trim it. If you know that that yeah. conical Two conicals are always going to be right there. Yep. Make it a foot long. Yeah, exactly. Why have you're the... going to get better heat transfer, everything, and better efficiency. So, and like I said, get that little brass fitting covered up because if it's not, I, I've experienced the condensation dripping back into that little uh, insulated tube. Not a big deal, but when you go to disconnect, a bunch of water pours out. <laughs> and one, once the hoses are connected, you're also going to want to just screw in the power lead from the like called chiller to the back of the conical because that's where the conical is pulling its power from is through that cord and connect to the chiller. On the standard controller, you can then set the, the temps you want. So um, pretty easy. It's just manual buttons on the side, up and down. There are a few more settings you can get into. Uh, for this one, we kept it pretty simple and adjusted it to our pitching temperature. The pro version of the controller, you have two choices. You can still do it the same way. You can still manually do it pushing the buttons on the screen itself or the, you know the nice part about it is you can pull out that app from anywhere and control it that way and it's instantaneous pretty much um, again both of them have preset controls i prefer just to watch it and do it manually um, so that's what we're going to do for this so for fermentation these conicals you kind of just set it and forget it right uh, you do want to check on them just to make sure nothing's going awry and if you need or want to make changes do that. Uh, in this case, William 
lets his beer go up to 74 degrees uh, towards the end of fermentation just to kind of help clean it up make sure it's fermented i treat it kind of like lager but not you know it's you don't need to worry as much but it's a yeah. nice little fail safe and in this system it's so easy to do so why not yeah so as you can see it got to 74 and then he decided it was time to cold crash it so again either manually or through the app you can now tell the glycol chiller to really kick in do its work william lowered it to 39 degrees uh, for our cold crash target temp and then just let it hang out for two or three days so now it's time to cold crash and dump the yeast before kegging this is one of the coolest features of this system because the combination of these two uh, pieces of equipment that allow you to cold crash it get it real cold get all of that yeast to the bottom of the cone so when we do dump it we are talking about clear beer we're talking about beer that's not really going to be affected by residual yeast in suspension. Yep. Sanitize all parts of the dual valve, of course, before starting, because this can get a little messy. So it's a good idea to have like a, a clean rag or paper towel underneath. Um, and here, William suggested we do this in two setups. One of the conicals, we used a small piece of silicone tube. Uh, the other, just a jar under the valve. Uh, using the top valve to dump this yeast, you pump the lever or I guess you should, we should say you push it and you might just get yeast coming out, yep. but you have found that often. English yeast, yeast that pack down more, get so packed down that a pumping action, you kind of just push it through there. Once it starts coming, I find that it almost shoots it out like a plug and then more yeast will come out. So. Okay, so the idea here is you're just draining out this yeast until clear beer runs or beer. It's It wasn't like super clear, but you also don't want to waste so much beer until it gets really clear being like oh my goodness but yep. basically once it stops being muddy and starts being liquid you stop yep yep exactly i might pour off maybe a pint of that not clearish beer yeah same thing if you're doing it with just a jar uh pump the top valve until the yeast slurry turns into beer and you're good to go all right so now that we've used the dual valve to dump the yeast um the next the other nice feature about the dual valve is that second valve which is the transfer or sampling port as well um super nice so i like to just lift the conical up onto a higher surface like a, i have a sturdy table for that that's just the perfect height for a keg below it uh, sanitize the tubing again just squirt some sanitizer into that bottom valve make sure it's nice and sanitized and with that tubing inserted and in your sanitized keg go ahead and open that uh, red quarter turn valve and you'll start seeing the beer flow out. I also do like to kind of just pop the top of the conical or the stopper for the airlock. Otherwise, you're just sucking all that air through the, the airlock. Yeah, it creates a vacuum. Yep, exactly. Seeing this for the first time in person while we were shooting this video, I was really impressed uh, at the ease of this part. It just goes right in as if kind of an auto siphon, collect almost every ounce of beer. You could see that pickup um, tube kind of exposed as the beer was leaving mm -hmm. and leaving that yeast cake. Yeah, and you can see it, the yeast actually, what's still falling down is going down the side of that cone mm -hmm. and not going towards it and everything. So. Yeah, it was cool. So get the beer into the keg, you wanna put a top on it, get that thing on gas immediately, and yep. then to clean this equipment is pretty easy. Yeah, at that point, I kinda treat it almost like a bucket, fill it up, let it soak, scrub it out. Um, once I clean the main body, then I'll take the dual valve off, disassemble that, and let that soak as well. The glycol chiller, just turn it off, let it hang out. Is there anything you gotta do for that? Just uh, get it out of the way? Yeah, so if I'm brewing again, I'll leave it on. If I'm not gonna brew again, within a week or two, I'll turn it off. It, it chills that reservoir very quickly. So that's, man, that's our, uh, our 101 on the glycol chiller and the conical fermenter from Grainfather. If you're a Grainfather user and have other tips to help people who uh, are looking at these pieces of equipment or already use them, put your tips, tricks, yeah. mods, hacks in the comments below. If you have any questions for us about these uh, pieces of equipment, leave those in the comments below or hit us up at brewmaster at northernbrewer.com. As always, uh, we love our grandfather stuff, man. <laughs> I've got a G30, yeah, he's yeah. got a G30, G40. I have the full range almost. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, that temp control is such a, I don't wanna say game changer, more like a relief. You just don't have to check stuff as much. It's less worrying. Yeah. It's just easier to repeat stuff and it makes brewing a little bit more fun. Not like me at my house where I'm taking a bucket from one floor to the next when I need like a five <laughs> yep. degree shift. I mean, I've done everything. I've done that. There's all kinds of things in between and it's just so nice to set it and forget it more or less. Right on. All right, y'all. 
Happy brewing. See you on the next video.